I'm not uh, casual. You are? Oh, no, no, you're not on, no, no, no. just for a discussion? Oh, Alden Avenue? Yeah. Oh, Alden Avenue, yeah, but we don't know when we're going to discuss that. It is on the agenda. Okay. So, if we get, come on. Sit tight. Okay, so that's what I did. That's what I did. Quick and formal. Hi, how you doing? Good day. Hey, Frank. 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 Hey,
but that's the way it is. That's life in the on the ocean. Do you own the property where yes, the Phragmites are? Yeah. Yes, we do. So as I think then as Pat pointed out, and you you know, be happy to have work with yeah. the um, commission, but and and certainly getting rid of Phragmites is a good idea. But you you are in a wetland, and so you want to do the right thing. Yeah, exactly. And that also includes like building up the road. What you don't want to wind up doing is creating an issue for somebody else. Got either. It, friend, all friends, right? Till you flood them. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, so we do have a small little boat, but yeah, okay. that works. Uh, all right. Yeah, you know, the other main thing is um, when we did have the water, the mailbox was about 36 inches, really yeah, high, whatever. Right. We six inches from the mailbox for about four weeks. Sure. God forbid. You know, you had to get an ambulance or fire. It's, you know, we're sick. concerned mainly with the stale water health and the safety issue. Sure. You no know end how they get in to get in there and with a fire engine or an ambulance or, or anything else. But I think it sounds, you know, get you know, just getting rid of a few Phragmites isn't a big deal. But let, raising the level of the road, doing those sort of things is something that you're going to have to talk to an engineer and yeah. show us. Yeah. I, you well. know, it really, I think that just removing the Phragmite at first, see, before we even have to deal with the street yet, like yeah. that there is going to open up a, a lot of space for a lot. a lot of the waters to go to during okay. rains and during everything else that I think that like that could solve 80 or 90 percent of the, the water just doesn't have any place to go anymore. It's all, yeah. it's all like land now. It's all like in the market. So Pat, to, to do the eradication of the Phragmite would require a notice? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, the people who responded have all done this before, so we could get the names to Caldwell's and work with them. Okay. That's great. All right. I mean, we're, we we don't have a – we're willing to work with you on that, but Thank there is a so process. So. so We want to be sure the way it's supposed to be done. Thank you, Paul. Great. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Thanks a lot. Much. Thank you. Thanks. Um, an RDA Senate, 29 Rebecca Road, porch replacement with an open deck. Is anybody here for Senate? Okay. Sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, on 29 Rebecca Road. So I know who you are, but nobody else. <laughs> my name is Gary Lynch. I'm a contractor for Frank and Louis Senate. Um, the deck got destroyed. It was a, a enclosed porch, actually, with a roof and walls. And um, we just proposed to put the deck back. Without the roof? Yes. They want an open deck. and. They're just going to build it like it's never been built before. So. <laughs> okay. What is, oh, you know like what? it's I, you never know, been built before? They're starting to oh, take yeah. this Real personally. Quick, i gotta, I got to run the spiel. On April 17th, in the 615 meeting, the Town Hall Central Conservation <laughs> Commission will act on the request of Francis Senate for, uh, for determination of applicability in the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Situate Wetland Bylaw to replace the damaged porch with a 12 by 25 open deck on property located at 29 Rebecca Road. About others and other interested parties are invited to attend. Thanks, sorry. So, Penny? Quickly, you said you're going to do it as though it was never there, but it looks like from re reading this that you're going to be using six concrete sauna tubes that are already there. No, they're not and there. Because then it says with two additional. Um, we're going to add a couple under the house. What was hold, holding the porch up before? The footings, but nothing was attached, and they were just taken away. So we want to go deeper. We're going to go six feet down and um, build them with boxes instead of sewing the tubes full of rebar. And, um, and then there's another drawing I did with um, the cross bracing. Yeah. And just keep everything there. know about that cross bracing. Does that bother anyone else, the cross bracing? I don't think so. Well, if it's and, just um, crosses. I also it changed it from 2 by 12, 16 on center to 12 on center because of the um, moisture shield deck and they recommend that anyhow. So it, it's going to be. Um, That's just the spacing you floor joist. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to use any lateral uh, uh, strengthening as well. I mean, just the crosses. 
underneath to keep the footings all together with carriage bolts, through bolts and everything. Yeah. We don't want anything to get moved around again. <laughs> and then you got a couple of panels to lift out. Yeah, to removable it. panels for the waves. Um, starting to get the hang of this. <laughs> The deck itself is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. They will let be, the water go through. Yeah, yeah, that's save a lot of money in the years <laughs> to come. All right. Okay. Richard? Okay. Tony? No, I don't have any questions. That's good. Pat? I just wonder have you gone through the building department yet with this plan? Have you talked to them about the type of setup for the footings and everything? Uh, it's laid out. Right on this plan. Oh, I know. But have you talked to them, to anybody in building, just to see if they're okay with this? Um, the only other thing Neil can request Bigfoot's on him, and if he wants them, we'll go with it. But I mean, the cross work and everything that. Uh, no, he accepted stuff. all the plans. They've had it for a month. Oh, okay. He said it was up to conservation. So. <clears throat> Any questions? I think we're okay. Yeah, they're in flood zone B, and I know, you know, they're pretty strict in building about that, so. Right. If it passes his piece, I think we're okay with, with the sauna tubes. We know we're in the hurricane zone, everything has to be attached, and. Yep. <clears throat> okay. I make a motion. Any, anybody, I'm sorry, did anybody yeah. in the audience? No? Okay. I make a motion for a negative ring. Second. All in favor? All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. The negative is good. Okay. Tedeschi Zero Foam Road. It's um. What time is it? Six thirty-three. Oh, okay. My clock is low. Six thirty-one. I got. These clocks are. Yeah. 6.31 exactly. <laughs> those, those, those clocks are fast too. Okay. Well, for the record, uh, Gregory Morse, Morse Engineering. This is our third hearing on this project, a new single family home at Zero Foam Road. At the last meeting, you heard from your consulting engineer that um, basically stated that he agreed with the drainage calcs that we were not going to be provide, that we were not going to be increasing any flooding at this property. This property, as you recall, it's within an AE zone at elevation 10, land subject to coastal storm flowage. We have the elevated house in the middle of the property, a gravel access driveway off of Foam Road, and a proposed rain garden at the rear of the property. The only outstanding item from the last meeting was the commission asked me to add the relocation of a town drainage pipe to the plan. I provided that to the commission, um, a sketch from the DPW that showed exactly what I've added to this plan, which is the relocated drain line. That was the only requested revision that's shown on this plan. And, uh, Kenny? No, I don't, that's all I wanted to say. Richard. Good. Uh, Greg, I notice on, on the revised plan you're talking about snaking and cleaning off site. So is that part of the plan? So this this sketch right here, it is not it is this is what was provided by the DPW. Okay. The DPW said that they were going to relocate this line and then snake and clean off site. You're correct. My applicant cannot propose work off-site, so that is not part of our proposal. We're relocating the line, as shown on the DPW sketch. The DPW owns anything further down the line. But DPW has committed to doing that. They put the note on the plan, so I would assume that's committed, you know, that they committed to it. I, they put the note on the Good plan. Job. You know, I, I just can't work off-site on somebody else's property. Without I, that. I realize you can't. I, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, was yeah. wondering what their... They did put that note on there. I noticed that. So let's hope. Tony, and I did speak to Sean. Okay. And Sean said that they were going to do the snake. They are going to do it. That, yeah. Okay. He's, he's the one that's further down. Yeah. 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 How, did they... Go ahead. Penny, did, did they say like... 
like that whole pipe, like all the way like to the end of where he they just said that it. they were going to once the new pipe was put in that they were gonna clean out. Okay. I was just wondering. That's kind of their response. Oh yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. I was just wondering because there was a question of where it ended up and all that. No, I did I think he go into that? that? Well, my feel from it was that once that new pipe was in, that mm -hmm. they had somewhere to go. Okay. All right. Where until the new pipe was in, they didn't. Okay. Pat, do you have anything you want to add? I was going to add to what Kevin was asking. They talked about cleaning up that whole area and taking care of that whole section of the uh, drainage system. So getting it all the way back up to where that ponded area is, and then yep. we call this close to the house, so that's all going to be part of it. So. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, you've added somebody to the table here. No, I have right. nothing to say. I'm just a casual observer. Right. I'm going to get up and let Greg have a seat back. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all right, Stacey. Okay. Uh, in the audience? Yep. Hi, Jamie Mankwich, Six Fall Mode. Um, I talked to Sean myself, um, and he told me that Mike Breen stated that the whole line needs to be replaced from that catch basin to, to across the street. Uh -huh. um, that, that was the last I heard of it. So it's making and cleaning the line. Uh, that was the first I heard of that. Okay. Um, to make this whole, pro I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help work with John to on this project. I'm not trying to. I just want to make sure this is done right. So if he's going to replace that line on his property, connect to something that's not working right now, um, I don't think that's an option for us to go forward and approve this plan right now. I think we should make the contingent. When you say we. Well, the, the board. I think we should make the contingent on the town, updating this whole line, and make sure that it's clear. And, and once that's done, then we can go ahead and John could install his new line on his property. Okay. I'm Richard Henderson. I represent John. Mm -hmm. The only thing I can say about that is making any permit contingent on some other agency doing work is illegal. You can't impose a condition, an order of conditions over which the applicant has no control and subject to the jurisdiction of another municipality or state government. It's, just, it's not a permissible condition. Okay. Thank you. The other problem with that is if he connects a brand new pipe to an existing pipe that's full of mud, that is the pipe that he puts in, it's going to get full of mud too. It's common sense. It but I think to, I it, think this whole sequence has yeah. to work together. But I he think what, just, when he we can't just put his own new pipe in and connect to a muddy pipe. When we saying. when we talked about this, the option, and if I recall from the last meeting, was that they could build this house without touching much of the pipe and they were willing to replace the piece work with the town and then they'd go forward and continue to work the, with the town um, and you know obviously a lot of this is older pieces as it is elsewhere in town um, so I think working with the DPW would be in everybody's best interest um, but again as they point out we're not here to tell the town what they can do we're, we're conditioning this one parcel and, and I think that's what we have to look at. And it sounds like the town's on its way towards doing that, but we can't tell them to do it either. Is there anybody else in the audience? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I, I, your, your name is? Michael Holden. I had submitted your request, the position that I stated last time I was here. Right. I just want to make sure that the commission has received that and it's part of the administrative record. Yes, this was, um, I had mentioned that there would be a look at um, the bylaw and regulations for the wording of work that takes place in the um, in an aid zone. Yep. So, and the letter was part of the record. And then I just I wanted to make sure we had a letter because I wanted to make sure that our secretary I mean Cal's really good at getting things but it seemed like it was specific enough that we want to make sure it was sure. part of our just, just why for the record I wanted to make sure you had it and it's part of the record. I believe I've seen it. <coughs> right. Um, it was sent by email, but let me I can get a copy. That's, right that's all right. As long as we have it. Okay. 
I mean, I, re- I well. obviously made a great impression. <laughs> 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 no, but I've seen, I've read it, and I believe it's on yeah. file. We, if we could make sure we print it and right. make sure it's in that folder. Right. I think because um, we had taken all the information except for that related to the pipe, you know, um, when I took this as information from the attorney, I figured I'd just, you know, talk to you about it rather than add a whole bunch of new things into the record. Because right. We had pretty much stopped taking new information. No, I, and, but I just want to make sure it's in the folder, that's yeah. all. Okay? Great. Thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry, just one more thing. Uh, if, if this does get approved, the height of the foundation, the top of the first floor, is, is, is there any way that could lower down? And this house is going to be the only house in the neighborhood that's uh, extremely uh, risen. I don't know if you've really looked at that and looked at the neighborhood, but this, this is, this is, this is, I mean, we, we have a purview to tell people they have to be at least X number of feet above. If they choose to go higher, it's really, it's the zoning issue, the, t- the height of the house. Chamber. It's not, uh, the only thing we, we look at is in an A zone, it's the floor, the finished floor elevation. And in, in a V zone, it's the lowest framing member. But in an A zone, we want to make sure that he's at least a certain height. But... We, no we control of being up to us. Not from our, not from our board. Can I respond to that too? There, there is an abutting house that that's taller. The, the house in the rear is actually going to. Oh, it's just, it's not in our jurisdiction. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I, what we have to do is be sure it's I at least a certain I, yeah. height. I understand. That's our. Purview. Was, the higher the better. Well, from your standpoint. Depends on how you look at it, but yeah. but our purview is to make sure that it's at least that high. Right. Um, anybody else? I make a motion to close. I would second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much for Thank taking you. the time. And, and Pat, can you make sure yeah. that, that that this gentleman's uh, yeah. letter is available for us, please? Thank you. Yeah. Town of Situate, DPW, 100 Lighthouse Road, Seawall Revetment Reconstruction. We had we could accept information up until the time it's closed. Right, right. right. Yeah, that's fine. Right. Just let's as, just make as sure long as we fine. have it. Yeah, the only thing we want to I'd, I'd, yeah. so, but I, I, I have it and I talked to you about it. So. Yep. Hey, do I, Patrick, how are you? Okay. You're up. Great. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Carlos Pena from CLE Engineering, and I'm here on behalf of the town of Situate uh, for the um, reconstruction of the lighthouse at Cedar Point. I may uh, just give you a brief uh, update on, on the project. The seawall, right? Not the seawall. Seawall. We call it Cedar Point Lighthouse Seawall. You're not doing exactly. lighthouse, though. No, no, no. <laughs> Uh, last year we were hired by the town to go out and, and inspect the, um, and survey the, uh, the site. And we found there's a section that's about 310 feet by 60 feet. So we surveyed the entire area. We had three borings that were performed at the site. We determined that the top layer, 10 to 15 feet is gravel. Below that you have organic fill. And below that you have till down about 25 to 35 feet. So we looked at three different options for trying to improve this area. The problem that the town has been having, as you know, is overwashed during storm events, and the continual need to rebuild the wall after, you know, following snow, uh, after storm events on a continual basis. We looked at a concrete seawall, continuing one along and across. We looked at steel sheeting. We looked at, and, and we looked at revetment. The issue with the other two structures is we have nothing really to support them on because you'd, you'd have to drive piles and the cost associated with that. So in the day, we looked at a, a revetment solution. The revetment solution that we came up with 
essentially pushes the, the elevation of the seawall atop the canals between 14.2 or 14.4 at one end, and it rises to 15.5, more or less relative to NGVD 29, around the, sea, around the lighthouse. What we're going to propose to do is push that 14-foot contour line out with wood stone, create an apron in front of it, and then place a second step up to elevation 18. We ran, some, we ran some modeling on this, and what the scheme does is it reduces the, the overwashing rate by half. Now, to eliminate it completely, you'd have to raise this wall up to elevation 22, which would be about 12 feet above the parking lot. Right now, if you walk out to the lighthouse, the stone that's placed around the perimeter is at 15.5. We're proposing one more step or two and a half feet for this 18-foot elevation. You'll still get the same feel as you do now, more or less. This is the, I think this is the most dis, uh, disruptive way to solve the problem without completely changing the character of the site and providing enhanced protection for the town from storm events that we've come up with. We've uh, shown the, uh, the, uh, the FEMA zones on this, the historic high water line, the annual high tide line. And we've, we've managed to stay out of those zones, not, not, not for the sake of any reason, but other than just making the, the wall as efficient as possible. And with that, do you have any questions? I understand you don't want to change it too much out there, but my concern is that at the rate of the massive storms we seem to be getting now, the frequency, that in this point in time, might it not be wise to go all the way to the 22 foot height? 22 feet would just create a huge wall, and it really wouldn't fit in that perimeter. And you, you, you come into the parking lot and you'd be faced with a 12 foot stone wall in front of you. At least, and again, more aesthetics and use than everything else, at least with an 18 foot high or an elevation 18, you could access the beach as, as a lot of people do. And I, I go down to the site during the summer a couple times a week, in fact, every morning or most mornings. And there's always somebody walking along the beach. Yeah. And what I didn't want to do is create something that would impede any sort of public access to the beach. And that's why I sort of shied away from the concrete structure and you know, other engineered solutions. I, I think it would dramatically impact the area. I've also spoken to the lighthouse keeper, Mr. Gallagher, and got a little bit more insight as to, you know, I mean, there's been stories where stones are going through the, the windows that are up about 30 feet on that lighthouse. I mean, well, I understand the area. I've seen the storms out there. I've gone out there. And this is why it's taken so long to go from the survey to this point. We met with the seawall committee. We vetted these elevations. I think it was critical with the town to really understand what they were what they were getting. And we just put an awful lot of thought into this, including going out there during nor'easters and just really watching what's happening. There's two. There's another phenomenon that occurs out here is with the breakwater that comes out the crop that the Corps of Engineers created out here. That's at elevation nine. And the phenomenon that I wasn't aware of until I went out there and witnessed this: as the nor'easter sets up, is a wave that crawls and gets reshaped along that breakwater and gets thrown onto this beach. When that wave concurs with a wave that's coming across up to the beach, that's when you get the explosion of water over the top. Yeah. And th so what we try to do is create a bump around the lighthouse, which would hopefully knock down that wave. And then you've got, this, then you've got the 10-foot waves of 10 seconds that are coming onto the site anyway, which are tough enough to deal with. So this would improve the situation, and we just didn't feel that it was you know, a, a wise thing to go up to elevation 22, although it, it, you know, that would remedy the overwash, but then I think you, you may completely destroy the character of the site. I, I don't you know. That was just my opinion. That's just my concern. No, I just no. don't know how, you know, <coughs> what Mother Nature's going to throw at us in the next 10 years. And it, it's only going to get worse. I am, that's what that's my exactly concern. right. Exactly right. Uh, can I just ask you this question? Say we go to the 18 feet now, okay? Um, and in five, ten years, we find that we've got to go higher. Can that be done on this structure, or do we go back to square one? No, you, you have you have the stone there. I mean, the quarried stone. I would not reuse any of the material that's there for stone. Would it would have to be quarried, you know, hard edges and, and, and built correctly. Right. Yes. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't use rounded stone again, but if in, the, in five or ten years when you really, you could reuse the stone and reshape it if you had to. At that point, you'd probably, at that, you'd probably be talking about raising the lighthouse and raising the parking lot if that was the issue. Okay. 
and then also rebuilding the breakwater. So if, if hopefully we could never reach that point. But if that's, I think, I think you're looking at the entire point. We're involved now at something at Orion Point down in New York, and the entire point's washed away. Or we're trying to protect an electric cable, so I completely understand your concern. Um, no, anyway. <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, you indicated with the 18 foot, uh, you feel like it would be about 50 percent improved over what's there now. Over what's there now. So, for example, this winter it would have been half as bad. I'm not trying to be smart. I'm, no, I'm no, trying to get course, a picture in my mind. I know the area. Well, what's well happening myself. now is, I mean, you're throwing stones and you're throwing, you know, rather large stones and gravel and sand over the wall. What we're trying to do is create by having a dual step process, which sort of mimics what's going on over by the glaze, <coughs> that wall, which again is a wall in front of another wall. Yes, yes. Trying to slow the phenomenon of that occurring down. I mean, um, I, I, I think I mean, I mean, unfortunately we've been asked to, you know, to, to stop Mother Nature. And, uh, I can't. Right, right. I get that. No. But I think this would, this would provide, I, I would hope that this would provide an enhanced protection. And again, the structure itself, by the virtue of its shape, would also become hopefully a resource area where during you know the ele other 11 months of the year when people enjoy being out there, they could walk down to the beach and, and across the structure. I didn't want to create a barrier from the beach, and this is as high as I could go without creating one. Anyway, <coughs> what uh, uh, what effect would this have on the outer edge of? Of what we have right now, would you have to have to build another layer out to get the same uh, the same proportions? Uh, well, here's here's what you have now. What you have now is outlined with the, the brown with the, with the brown. That's pretty much a right now. It's sort of a berm. It's shaped on the backside by the granite stone, and the rest of it's sort of pushed back up there every time there's a storm, and it varies in elevation. Yeah, I'm just I'm trying to get a feel, Carlos, of, of whether or not we're we're expanding the base. Uh, we are expanding the base. The one the seawall constructed in its own footprint. But then again, as we keep pushing the stone back up to the beach and recreating this burn, I mean, is the affected area? you know, really 30 or 40 feet, and we're just putting the small apron in front of it. Mm -hmm. See, the apron's going to protect the first step, and then you've got the second step. All of this should be interlocked, and the wave would actually, what happens is the wave comes off to the storm, it, it, it essentially breaks at the annual high tide line and surges up the beach, is what I've observed. And this would, this would become its primary barrier, then you'd have a secondary one, where it'd have to climb up two barriers before it made it up over the wall. Okay. So how far out? Sorry. Go ahead. This is no. kind of going along, but you said. So how far out is that going to go past where it is now? Should Further out? Yeah. How, like the, the apron as you're just no, explaining. Yeah. It's shown on the plan. By definition, it's probably 20 or 30 feet out, whatever structure that's out there. Right. It's going to go out a total of 60 feet. 60 feet. And it will go out to approximately the annual high tide line. Which is as much structure as, as we could possibly get without having have to, you know, relicense it or license the structure. Has the state approved this? Well, above the annual high tide line, there's not a chapter in any one or a core requirement for it. There isn't. Yeah. Is that, uh, yeah, okay. And, and it's not trying to subvert or we're trying to get around any sort of regulation. This is as much structure as we needed, and we were able to work it within the, the, the contours that we had out there. If you, if you ended up with half of it, or if you took out the first, the first 14 foot extension and you, you, know, you were just to build this portion of it, you would end up with you know, a, little bit less, a little bit less structure. And we ran into that situation once with the glades on the back side of the glades many years ago when the, 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 the uh, DEP came down to Coastal Zone Management requested it to be half as, you know, you build half the structure. Well, it was half as effective. Yeah. <coughs> well, they made, they made a, a point in their letter, I don't know whether it's this one, yeah. about uh, um, 
a wanting to do the work from the land side which I, I we can do which you can do but the uh, the other issue of, of um, um, not this is my interpretation of what sure. they said is not can I read this? Uh, sure go ahead <laughs> So from the Department of Fisheries, um, they reviewed the notice of intent, and it um, abuts the shellfish habitat for blue mussels, um, which is afforded protection under the Wetlands Protection Act. Um, and it's mapped as land containing shellfish as deemed significant of interest in the Wetlands Protection Act. So they made four recommendations. Reconstruction of the seawall should be within the same footprint as the existing seawall. This is from Marine Fisheries. Sure. Um, then work from the upland as much as possible to avoid equipment on the beach. Um, the staging area for the storage of construction materials and equipment should not be allowed in the intertidal area. And then fuel spills and from refueling construction equipment will adversely impact sensitive resource areas. If equipment is refueled on site, adequate containment and cleanup materials should be required. To minimize impact. Yeah. So it's that number, it's that first one, Frank, that I think. No, I understand. I mean, you've obviously thought a lot about this, um, and this seems to be what, the least costly solution or the only solution? The, the least costly, well, it's the most practical solution. Because any, any other structure, concrete or steel, we'd have to drive piles of some sort of support, support mechanism through the underlying organic, organic sediments. And, and then again, you would completely block access. If, we, if I put a seawall across the entire area, from connected that seawall around the uh, lighthouse, you'd have no access to the beach. Can I just throw it? I mean, it, it seems to me like a revampment is a more natural looking piece and, and um, I really would like to see less personally I'd like to see less poured concrete seawalls and more absolutely just, and especially in this area also I mean not being an engineer or a scientist but it just seems like it slows the water down where we have this sea crashing into these concrete seawalls it seems like sooner or later they're they're going. I mean some of the stone can get dislodged or come apart but they can rework it or as Penny points out at some point maybe add some more to it but there's no point in making it skinny at the base or it's just it's not gonna um, work the way that it should agreed especially affording protection around the lighthouse because I mean right now on a regular basis you have those blocks of stone which are around that, that walkway knocked out so I mean we have a couple of conflicting things we have an historic building we have some mussels in this area, and, and granted, we're conservation commission, not the historic commission or the historical society. But I think we've, we've shown the habitat on the plans. We, we took, we and we're outside of that, or, or well, it's, it's located here. This is the map area. This is where the, this is where the uh, shellfish habitat exists. Mm -hmm. And you're not working in that area. And, we, and, and, accord, and all the other conditions that are that have been, you know. I mean, we can write into ours as well that they use the parking lot for stage and that they the don't. The other work. three, I think, are easily handled. Right. Sure. And we are proposing that we do use the parking lot for the staging. I've already indicated on the plans. Plus, we also had to indicate how we would channel traffic through there. We're leaving one lane open at all times to make sure traffic can get through it during construction. Um, it, it all comes down to shape and believe. They took it. us off the hook. If they were out there tying up the parking lot all summer, they just from that conservation commission was saying, just <laughs> Department of Fisheries. <laughs> <laughs> so true, <laughs> Captain. <laughs> um, no, not a, not to be a, a smartass, but um, um, the Phoenicians figured this out two thousand years ago how to do it, but uh, they didn't worry about the uh, the beaches and. You know, and and they didn't worry about what it looked like, and it and, and it's worked. Mean, we're, we're but we're this ain't this ain't going to work for two thousand years. But you know, I guess. <laughs> um, tell us, it, and we want to get to the audience too. But is there any? As Penny points out, was there any thought to maybe just 
protect in the immediate area right around the lighthouse with something a little bit higher? Yeah. I mean, they have right I, I, now. They have those big blocks. They have the big blocks, and this would be one more step beyond those large blocks. So, but are those going? You're not going to. No, those will stay. It'll just be you know they can reconstruct that entire look, but you just come. You, you'll come up another two and a half feet. I mean, I've been I've been out to weddings out there. One it wouldn't do. Got married out there. Yeah. Uh, again, this is purely my my personal point of view. I just don't. We're not usually encouraging more, but no. I think we're all pretty sensitive right. to the to the lighthouse. This is one spot where. We really have to try and do whatever we can. Do. We can in 22 feet. I've tried to envision. Believe me, I've tried to envision what 22 feet would look like, and I just. And right now, the top of those blocks is 15. You said it's 15 and a half around the lighthouse, and it's 14 and change along the parking lot. So we're going to be two and a half feet higher than it is now. Which, if you looked at the pile that was placed back up there after this last storm, it's about that's about how high it is right now. It, it doesn't seem completely out of character. It doesn't come, doesn't you know? It's 18 now, Carl. No, it's it's between 14. No, it was when we surveyed. It was between 14 and a half and 15 and a half. Right. After that last storm, we had they had it piled up considerably higher than that, and it looked to me like it might have been close to 18. Hmm. Again, this is just sand and gravel. It was, it was. I had to look up to it, so I wasn't okay. looking. I certainly wasn't yeah. looking down at it. All right. Anybody in the audience? Dave. Yeah. Uh, I'm on the uh, seawall committee and also obviously president of the City Historical Society. Uh, so I'm wearing two hats. Uh, the two hats, um, in concurrence with everything that Carlos has said, Carlos has spent, I guess, well over a year uh, studying this whole uh, area. He's done a great job. He's been into the uh, seawall committee several times to review the, the plans and, and give updates as he, as he develops it. Here. I'm really pleased with, with what this is going to do. Um, in terms of the lighthouse, the lighthouse right now is a big problem. Um, the stones that were put in front of the tower back in 1989 when the parking lot was rebuilt, uh, held for quite a few years, they've now moved twice over the last five or eight years and had to be reset. So obviously something has to be done there. The, the, the lighthouse can't take much more pounding with the way, with the way things are. Uh, in terms of the parking lot, I think the amount of two and a half feet or so is not very huge. But the seawall down in the back of the building in 2006 built two feet higher. And it's hard to believe that two feet and an additional height would make a, a huge difference, but it's just incredible for things that it's a different so I think he's one of the many things that he said is really great news. And my only comment is this has to happen as soon as possible. Uh, frankly, I'm hoping that it can get started right after July 1. It's not ideal in terms of the use of the area, but you don't want this kind of construction going on in the middle of the fall, that's for sure. In the lighthouse, I don't want to see it going through another I'm really pleased with everything that he's got. It's going to be great. Okay. Thank you. And I had covered up my piece that I was supposed to read with my plans. So <laughs> oh. <laughs> nobody changed in the audience. So on April 17th at 640, Townhouse Citra Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40, the Massachusetts General Laws, and Section 30700, Town of Citra Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of the Town of Situate to reconstruct a revetment on property located at 100 Lighthouse Road in Situate. But there's another interested parties are invited to attend. Is there anybody else in the audience? What's going to happen? This well, the storm that didn't go in, is it? I'm sorry, sir. What's your, your name, please? Jim. Jim. And the way the storm has been going, I mean, the, storm, the storms have moved now. I mean, is this going to be? Are they going to be moving just like the other ones have? Well, the stones that are up there. The way the, uh, the, way, the way the um, ice caps are melting and the ocean's rising. Hey, Santa, can you feel sure, like please. you can answer that? Uh, out there right now are much smaller stones. The revetment itself or the breakwater that the Corps built was four to six ton stone. When they went back to rebuild it, they put eight to ten ton stone out there. We're concurring with the Corps that you need at least an eight to ten ton stone 
of what this entire structure is going to be made out of to be able to withstand the forces it's going to be. So you're going to understand what he's, they're going to put much larger much stone. Larger much larger granite, granite blocks. Something. And as he was saying before, they're not going to use rounded stone. They want to use something with sharp edges so that they bind together. I mean, and it's going to we, be fit. It'll, it'll be fit stone. It won't just be thrown in as revetment. I mean, as rip wrap. The, the, the contractor, you know, be 25% engineering, 75% construction. I mean, the contractor is going to have to put these stones together well. Yeah. Yeah, a puzzle. So we've already worked. We've already worked with the, with the DPW to make sure the, the proper oversight is allowed to the project, so it is built correctly. That's key. Just have to wait and see what happens. That's all. Well, we know that it's an ongoing yeah, issue, but to try to protect that is, I think, is important. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? No. Motion. I make a motion to close. Second. Very good. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'll read this first. This, on April 17th at 6.50 p.m., Town Hall Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws, and Section 30700, Town of Citra Code of Bylaws, regarding the application Town of Marshfield to perform improvements in maintenance dredging of a 50-foot wide navigation channel six feet deep in the vicinity of the C Street Bridge on property located in the South River, Humrock, and Marshfield. About is another interesting cottage you're invited to attend. Good evening. Um, my name is Christine Player, um, another uh, person from CLE Engineering. We're representing the town of Marshfield Department of Public Works. This is Mike DeMeo. He's the harbor master for the town of Marshfield. And um, I could ask him about the mussels. <laughs> Could have. <laughs> um, essentially, we're here to propose um, some dredging in the South River. And because the, the town line between Situate and Marshfield actually goes down the, the river, um, we do need to get approval from both conservation commissions for the dredging of the channel component. The project itself consists of a channel, which will extend just north of the existing C Street Bridge about 1,600 linear feet down to in front of the Marshfield Yacht Club. Um, in addition, but not within the jurisdiction of the Situate Conservation Commission, the town will also be, uh, be proposing a three-foot basin area off of the town boat ramp uh, to provide water for launching and the docks um, that the town operates off of Ridge Road. Um, the material <coughs> is beach quality sand, and the material is proposed to be beneficially reused for nourishment along the uh, public beach down at Wrexham. As far as the purview of this, the Conservation Commission here, what I've tried to do is shade in the portion of the channel that actually falls within the boundary of the town of Situate. Um, the quantity of material that will be coming out of the Situate side of the river is about 5,600 cubic yards. The total dredge volume is about 11,000 cubic yards. So it's kind of like a half-half split. The project will have to be conducted um, using two different methods of dredging. When the C Street Bridge was replaced back in 2009, um, unfortunately, uh, we found out there's a bunch of abandoned remnant pilings that are existed with, existing within the navigable opening under the bridge. And those are exposed, <coughs> some are exposed now, some are just below the mud line. We've had two diving in inspections done by the town, and actually Mass Highway did one after the bridge was constructed. And there's about 20 to 30 remnant pilings. Because of the presence of the piling, and we've also um, located a lot of debris, cinder blocks, pipes, and all kinds of good stuff, um, we have to mechanically dredge this. We can't come in and use a hydraulic dredge and just pump the material onto the beach. We'll have to phase the project for this area here, which is about 150 feet, to be mechanically dredged, likely with a long reach excavator from both sides of the bridge, to get around the pilings, to cut them off below the dredge depth, remove the debris, and then take out about 900 cubic yards of material. And that material will be put into a small hopper barge, transported down to the boat ramp. Material will be put into trucks and then just trucked to the beach. The remainder of the channel, we're proposing hydraulic dredging. Um, the simplicity of hydraulic dredging is it allows us to literally pump this material about a mile and a half directly down to Wrexham Beach. So there's no trucking, we don't have those land impacts. 
And in a hydraulic dredging project, um, essentially 80% of what's going through that pipeline is water. So it allows the material to move through the pipeline. They'd have to use booster pumps to pump at the distance we need to. But the material will be literally pumped onto the beach, it will dewater on the beach, and then it will be placed um, up in the dune and beach areas of Braxton Beach. The proposed dredging will all take place in the channel under um, below mean low water, so it's all land under ocean. We don't have any intertidal impacts. Um, Marine Fisheries has provided comments, which I'm sure you got a copy. We've also gotten through the Marshfield Conservation Commission similar comments. So the town and DMF are pursuing a coordinated effort to come up with some um, mitigation uh, plans for shellfish impacts. The entire area is mapped <coughs> habitat, and DMF will be doing a survey assisting the town in developing um, an off-site mitigation seeding up in the North River um, to compensate for the impacts to, to shellfish. Um, with that being said, I don't know if anyone has any questions or... Um, my only question is, why was it decided that all the sand goes to rep sea? I knew someone was going <laughs> to ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> we all want sand on the beaches. And quite frankly, the answer is that the town of Marshfield is funding the project. Oh, there are no we get the spoils, <laughs> even though so it's from our property. Oh, so, I mean, I guess that's the answer at this time, unfortunately. Um, I'd like to add that um, the town is working with BCI Waterways in trying to secure some state funding um, for the under the bridge area. Um, when the bridge was replaced, the opening was actually widened because they increased the span length of the bridge. So they're taking some ownership of the fact that there's shoaling, there's those abandoned pilings, and I don't know, Mike, if you can confirm Tried that. Done. Has Sorry. it been approved, the, the money? I know it's in yep. the works. Heard it was so hopefully, happened. yeah, hopefully the state will step up and um, provide the funding necessi necessary to rect rectify the issues that pertain specifically to that bridge replacement project. So that's your answer, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Assuming all of this happens, when? Um, we are keeping our fingers crossed that um, this fall we can get in there. Um, I, the priority is really the bridge component um, because that truly is a, a major hazard with the existing pilings and the shelling that exists. The ideal would be that the mechanical effort went first and the hydraulic effort would follow. Provided funding is available, we would like to have everything done in one season. Um, that's the goal. Um, so it would be as early as this fall. Um, DMF, I believe their time of window, a uh, time of year restriction um, won't allow any dredging after February 1st. So we'd probably be looking to start this project after the boating season so we're not impacting, you know, the recreational component um, of the waterway. Yeah, likely end of October, early November. Um, but ideally, it, it, if it cannot be done in one season, um, that's the ultimate goal. Out of curiosity, and I'm just really curious, you said on the, um, on most of the dredging, it's going to be sent straight to Wrexham? Does it does it get piped down the river through the uh, through the dunes? Um, in, I do have the plan here. If you can kind of envision, um, it's a floating pipeline. So that pipeline will go just meander down the river. And the way that we've um, brought the pipeline on land is to come up as a series of um, existing footpaths right. that actually lead right into the parking lot. So we're trying not to disturb any more than we have to. Um, so we're trying to stay on existing pathways across the parking lot, and then there's an access way, a footpath that takes you up to the beach. Yes, right. And then the pipeline will be placed on the beach, and typically they, they trench out a hole for the material to be pumped into so the water just seeps into the ground. The material dries. This, dries. this is nice coarse sand that's not going to retain water. Um, and then they'll spread it um, to the, the berm configuration. We're basically going to match where the dune is now and come down and just slope into the beach. Thank you. I mean, I realize that's not situ. No, I know, and that's why I included it in. It, it's, it's kind of unusual that you're proposing only a little part of a project to somebody's <laughs> conservation commission. So I wanted to give you guys the whole overview of what the project consists of. I would hope there are more things coming along that are going down the middle of the river both sides. Yeah. Does, does this... Touch on uh, that too. Can you? Yeah. Does, does this back up to the uh, dredging that we did, when was it, 10 years ago? Good question. Yes, it does. It ties into, essentially, on the north side of the bridge, there's a 75-foot channel that's an existing channel. 
the dredging back in 2004 or five, whatever, um, literally ended at this side of the bridge. We're dredging a little bit of that area based on our survey, a little bit of shoaling was noticed, but we didn't notice any shoaling um, out in this area here above the minus six um, depth of the channel. However, as we go up further, and Mike will probably, this is what you're probably gonna allude to, is I know the town of Situate and Marshfield are partnering to address the shoaling in the outer, the mouth area, um, right. the area A, which was dredged um, back in the mid 2000s. Um, so that is also on the docket as well. It's not part of this project, sure. but um, the existing navigable channel um, that starts on the north side of the bridge and goes all the way to the mouth, that's, that's a project that's also in the works. We're such a good a ton of marshals situate got a fifty thousand dollar grant from DCR uh, last summer, so basically rather than piecemeal on projects like you know hundred feet of project, two hundred feet of river, basically we're going to um, dovetail in from the mouth of the river all the way down the South River and connect into this project, which connects into the Yacht Club, and that way over the next ten years, five years, that's permit for there, we can do the whole South River in phases. So that portion of sand can well go on the Humrock Beach, it go on the Rexham Beach, it go. I mean, sand migrates anyway. But in this project, with you know, Marshall is mostly it's funding all of it, but there's like two and a half miles of river that will be pumped probably hydraulically on the on the Humrock beaches in the near future if permitting. The only problem is now you have a situation with the public beach, private beach. You know, some people ask, well, it's I, a good question, but some people ask, well, how come this sand's not going to Humrock? And I'm a resident situate. It's a good question that, however, the hydraulic portion of this project is being uh, probably done by Barnesville County Dredging, which is a, a mutual aid agreement between the town of, of Marshall and Barnesville County Dredge. So you can't put, put potentially put um, public sand on a private beach. So that's why Rex Sand was used before by the Yacht Club, yeah. and that's why we're in this case where that's why it went that way. But in the future, be a lot of sand coming to the situation. Just to add, um, it's Chapter 91. Um, is really the governing factor in terms of publicly dredged uh, sandy material reuse on, on um, beaches as nourishment. Um, the, the provisions are that any publicly dredged entity put the sand on a public beach. It, not that it can't go on a private beach, however, when you cross the line into a private beach, the owner has to concede to a public access easement below mean high water if that sand goes on their beach. So it just gets a little more complicated when you bring in the private uh, beach areas versus the public beach areas. In this particular case, it's not an issue. Everything's <coughs> going on the public beach. But um, just to kind of expand upon that, that there's always a little wrench in the simplicity of just putting sand on a beach. I think if we just dump it at the <laughs> south end of the mouth, it'll get there anyways. But. Well, I know it, it's not to get off the, the beaten path here, but we were talking about the other project, um, the Citro Sit Haven Master last week, and the last time they dredged, they put it in the near shore site right around the corner by Fourth Cliff. Right. And CLE actually did a pre dredge ser uh, survey of the near shore area, and then we did a post placement of that area, and the sand was already gone. Like, it, it just moved. Like, Amazing. Well, it right. went down to Wrexham as well. Right? <laughs> <laughs> if, you've been, if you've been down to Wrexham lately, um, Actually, I was down there on Sunday, and I mean, the it. storm has really, I mean, the dunes are, it's amazing. It's oh, amazing what this winter did, and I'm sure all of you know, everyone has their, I live on the beach. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's been a tough winter for everyone, so this is good timing to get some of that restored. How, how much of your permitting process have you gone through? We have quite a lengthy permitting process to get through, partially because we're dividing towns, but um, we've gotten through the MEPA process, so we've gotten our ENF certification. We have gone in front of the Marshfield Conservation Commission. However, we're waiting to close that hearing because we're waiting for natural heritage uh, comments. We had to go to natural heritage for the Marshfield component because the beach is in um, priority habitat. So we were just waiting to get natural heritage's comments, and then we'll go back to the town of Marshfield, hopefully close the hearing. We filed with both ZBAs, um, oddly. ZBA doesn't usually get involved in dredging, but Situate, uh, the bylaw does have dredging, um, a, a requirement to file. So we have filed with ZBA. The hearing is May 16th. And we've also, um, Marshall's bylaw, interestingly enough, has a provision for dredging as well. So you need a special permit from ZBA, and that's May 14th. So that's all in the, in the COG. Um, we have submitted the DEP 401 water quality cert, which will be required. We are submitting, by the end of this week, the DEP Chapter 91 waterways permit application, and then we'll be filing with the Army Corps of Engineers for their uh, 
category two general. You may not make. You may not be ready for this fall. And <laughs> everybody's all lined up though. <laughs> so. Um, Isn't it the Corps of Engineers that uh, uh, that allows you to do the dumping on the beach? It depends. It's all on the title um, location. Any sand that's placed above the high tide line is not within the Corps' jurisdiction. We are just below the high tide line, so sure. it is in the Corps' jurisdiction. It was on waterways when, when we did our part of it, so I was yeah, and then the Corps, the Corps, in this particular case, will um, review the nourishment because we are just below that high tide line. Um, chapter 91, your threshold is mean high water. So Chapter 91 won't be commenting on the nourishment, but we're in the jurisdiction for the navigable um, dredging. Frank wants me to stop talking. So if, if, if it, everyone's head is spinning now, you can appreciate <laughs> the process of review for dredging. <laughs> Simplify. Yeah. Uh, the redundancy, it's, really, it's, a, it's a lot. But um, you know, we feel confident. Um, you know, we've talked with all the agencies. There's a lot of heads up um, going on here. So fingers crossed. You can be small. sure that a dredging project gets reviewed by a lot of I, I know that it does. Uh, ad ad nauseum. <laughs> Is there anybody in the audience that wants to speak to this? Other than that they can't have the sand? Um, and I think I saw an email from Mark Patterson that he... Yeah, um, yeah Mark sent a letter yeah, today. Mark sent yeah. a letter of support. And DEP was out on a site visit too. And then I think most of the uh, conditions we're concerned with are being addressed by a division of marine fisheries. They have a whole list of things. Yeah. And I, I don't know, you did get the copy from Marine Fisheries that yeah. clearly yeah. explains that we're coordinating, the town's coordinating, they'll be doing the, the shellfish survey. Um, recently, Mike coordinated a similar effort from Green Harbor. There was some dredging. There was some minor intertidal impacts, same, very similar situation. Um, and they came to the bat, and uh, yeah. it's been a cooperative effort. They've yeah. cited the area in the North River, and we'll be going to the same site. Well, Mike's in the room, too. I just want to so we appreciate the cooperation with Marshfield. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll be honest, the town's of Marshfield situated, even with the waterways now, I mean, the collaborative effort is really focused on even, it helps us with grant money, because like we're talking, kind of regionalizing basically what it is, but I mean, we share the rivers, we share a lot of areas, I mean, Humrock is, some people say Humrock's Marshall, I mean, it's right, everything's all tied, tied together, but unfortunately, in this case, when they widened the bridge back in 08, 09, never dredge that portion of the bridge and yeah it impacts navigation to a huge extent but it also impacts the kids that are jumping off the bridge mm -hmm. which is illegal however if no, a kid no. comes from Worcester per se and jumps off the east side of the bridge and lands in two feet of water and breaks his neck you know it's a huge public safety issue as well so we're, we're, we're really trying to exp expedite this project especially that portion of it so, well, so we appreciate it, your yeah, and yeah. both for the work of both you and Mark yeah. um, Patterson we've, we've Certainly do appreciate it. We do it. a lot, even with shellfish. Me and Mark work hand in hand. Well, we really appreciate your effort. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Appreciate it. And you are also right about the kids jumping. The first ones were today. Oh, starting to get cold. <laughs> but it's school vacation. Yeah. Well, and I'm going to tie the, well, the water warms up in the marsh. <laughs> yeah, right. It's cold in July. <laughs> okay. So it's a, it is an interesting situation where two towns are involved in, in being involved in a lot of projects within the state and also working for DCR Waterways many years ago as part of their grant funding. When two towns can combine forces, they like to see the funding spread around. So it, it's kind of a powerful tool that you folks can use when you have both communities involved in these types of projects because the benefits are far greater and they're viewed as being far greater. So We appreciate Marshfield taking <laughs> on this one. <laughs> I just, Rosemary? May I ask one question that was brought up? Um, you talked about the uh, possible dredging from the mouth to meet this dredging project, doing it in stages. Would the mouth be at the beginning yes. of the stage? More than end? likely. It, it, it'll be after the survey is over, it'll be all the, the most potential, the most hazardous spot to be done first. Fabulous. But, yeah, but, I but so if you permit the whole river, you save on a lot of money where you save like, um, well, consulting fees once, sorry, Christine. But if you permit the whole area, say if we get a hurricane three years from now and it blows through the mouth, across Central Ave, well, we have permits in place to dredge that area. Whereas money becomes available, you dredge, dredge the spots that are now shoaling. Rather than waiting through all this process, th this process is done for the next five, 10 years. All you do is um, have the permits reissued or renewed. So if the town is saving a lot of money going forward, it's, long, it's a lot of long range planning, but it's, uh, it's a good focus for me and Mark to work on, so it's very good. And you save taxpayer money, by the way. Thank you. Is 
this going to be ca conditioned as a maintenance plan as well? When, the, when you give your orders? Well, we would ask that we be allowed under the order that's issued to do any maintenance dredging as needed. I mean, given the three-year term, sure. um, certainly we could come back for an extension to get hopefully another couple of years. Um, but just to make it as simple as I can say, all the permits that are required, the various permits have various expiration dates, but all of them will allow a maintenance dredge effort at least to five years. And there's oftentimes an, an opportunity to, to, before things expire, to request a time extension. So it's kind of the heads up approach of trying to keep these things valid as long as you possibly can. And what's very advantageous about this particular site is it's sand. So it's not that it's not chemically contaminated. You don't have to test it. It doesn't, it, it's just the grain size analysis. It's clean stuff. So it's, it's a very simplistic type of dredge and place um, operation. So there's a, a great benefit to this material being sand. Great. Thank you very much. Do I have a motion? Motion to close. Second. Motion to close. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Put those dates in your Google calendar so you don't <laughs> forget. I got stuck with the stand. <laughs> uh, yeah. He was pretty good at that. I know, awesome. huh? That he is was first. a little too willing to bring everything out this, this <laughs> afternoon. That is first day. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. This is Geary. Zero and 23 Parker Ave. We have vegetation, install lawn and retaining wall. <laughs> On April 17th, 2013 at 7 p.m., the Town Hall Situate Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131. Section 40, the Massachusetts General Laws, and Section 30700, Town of Citra Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of Michael Geary, including a stormwater permit to clear vegetation, install a lawn, and retaining wall on property located at 0 and 23 Parker Ave. The letters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Bill Orenberger. I'm here tonight with uh, Mike Geary. And uh, his wife Colleen's with their five kids tonight, so she can't be here. And uh, along with. Glad you us, didn't bring them all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul Marabito, who I believe you know, and our, and our wetland scientist Brad Holmes. Uh, the Geary's are Citra residents, and they're moving to the property at 23 uh, Parker Avenue. We've already received permission from the Zoning Board of Appeals for them to uh, raise and reconstruct this. In addition to that, uh, we're looking for permission. Basically, the real goal here is to extend their backyard for their five young kids. Uh, when Brad, after Paul, Paul speaking, Brad will speak and answer any questions. And I know there's elimination of invasive species and some on-site mitigation, but in addition to that, the Geary's is being new members to the neighborhood, and they've been out several times to the spit, and they really love it out there. And they're also aware of the fact that there's an ongoing uh, funding problem with the town of Situate to protect the piping clovers in their habitat out there. And one of the things, because we have certain constraints on the site, and we do have on-site mitigation, but they like to offer uh, to help with some off-site mitigation in the neighborhood, namely to help with uh, the funding with the Conservation Commission, because I know on an annual basis you have to put up fencing, you have to do things, and you're under a lot of constraints, not only from Audubon, but from uh, DEP, Natural Heritage, and all these kind of things. And getting a feel for what this is, they'd like to actually, as part of this, to offer to put $7,500 in an account for this purpose with the Conservation Commission uh, as off-site mitigation to help deal with this endangered species thing that's uh, an issue important to the town of Michigan. But with all that said and done, let me turn this over to can I just make a comment on that? Sure. I was wondering if we could separate the issues of uh, some type of uh, plan for the flood is separate from the permitting application that's before us because we're looking at the Weapon Protection Act and we're looking at how to mitigate for any kind of disturbance on the site. Although we greatly appreciate this offer, I think it's actually should be separate from the permit application procedure. The, the only reason why I offer it, where we offered it, Pat, is because I know I know in the past the commission has whatever whatever is up in the commission field 
And uh, as far as offsite mitigation, usually it's something that you try to find in the proximity that the town that the town has a, a need for. Now, if there's other things in that proximity, then obviously the dairies would be, you know, amenable to helping in that. But I think one of the one of the key components of that, at least from my standpoint, is that it's important that they offer this and that it's not something that the commission imposes upon them. I can appreciate that. I just think under the Wetland Protection Act, we get a year of permit application and uh, presentation. And to talk about this before we even look at the whole project and decide no, what is needed. But no, no, understood. Uh, but I was just saying that at the outset and then yeah. revisit that. Whatever the, I, I whatever the will of the board is, and if it's right. something that you don't feel that. Right. Uh, no, that I, know, good, I know this has been done in the past. I just think it's you walking on that ice when you talk about a mitigation program. when it's something unrelated to the project itself. You know, yeah. The work that's being proposed. Oh, I, I understand, but, yeah. the, but the nature of off-site mitigation is is when it's you don't thing. have on the property some of the things, in other words, the actual physical presence. Right. And if you're trying to do something that is more environmentally, you know, productive, right. you know, that's... No, I understand. I understand. Okay. Yeah. Enough, Paul. Okay, thank you. Um, what I like to point out is we filed two separate applications for you. I mean, with, with the commission, one is the uh, notice of intent for Zero Parker Avenue, which is the lot outlined in yellow, and the work and uh, the purpose of that is to seek approval to do the work within a hundred feet of the isolated vegetated wetland in this area here. Um, this is the fifty-foot buffer and the hundred-foot buffer. Above that is the um, area for number 23 Parker Ave. Uh, for presentation purposes, Patrick asked me to do a plan showing the existing house, which is right here in the purple. Um, this is the house and the enclosed porch. This has no garage on it. The proposed house is outlined in the green. This end of it would, would, would be the garage. The vehicles would drive up Parker Ave and go into the garage in this area here. And this is the house here. Um, and the pink area is the outline of the property for number 23 Parker Avenue. Um, the reason we file a stormwater permit is any land that has a slope of over 15%, which is in this area here, and there's some down in here in the buffer zone and the slope here, we're, we're required to prepare a stormwater permit. Um, and we have submitted that. The drain couch was submitted to you in a, a booklet. And it, it does meet all the um, requirements of the bylaw in that for stormwater, any increase in the volume of the water for this whole site has to be, uh, has to be recharged and kept on site, which it is being done down in this area here. We supplied the details on this plan as well as the um, uh, engineering design criteria in the stormwater report. It's, it's a book at about that thick, with which you do have. Um, as far as the work under the um, uh, notice of intent, <coughs> the work within the buffer zone involves uh, constructing a uh, concrete wall starting this, well, starting at the buffer zone, the, the, the wall actually goes up to here. But it would come down property, it's, it's going to be five feet off the property line. We come straight across and back up to here. The wall only needs to go to this area here to contain the fill um, to support the uh, stormwater recharge system and also um, the fill that's required to create the lawn area behind the house. Um, this is the proposed um, walkout uh, basement area of the house. There'd be a 30 foot uh, pervious paver patio in this area. There'd be a wall here, and then three feet down from that, they would walk down three steps to the lower area, which would slope out at 2%, and this would be the lawn area and the play area for the kids. Um, <clears throat> again, this blue line is the wall. Um, the area shown in green is the area that Brad will talk about, where there's going to be the removal of invasive species and the um, revegetation of that area where the plants he's proposing. Um, so the wall is, the purpose of the wall again is to contain the fill and level this area off. Um, there are some trees in this area, but uh, right now the majority of it is um, underbrush and vines and 
Uh, Fricker bushes. Um, what kind of bushes? Fricker. Frickers. Oh. We call them Frickers. Briars. <laughs> 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 Maybe Brad ought to start, Paul. Are they big? Are they big Frickers or little Frickers? <laughs> <laughs> big Frickers or little Frickers? Big. Very small. Yeah. I got a tap. That's uh, right. This, this is your Brad's overview. Perfect. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll uh, hand it over to Brenda. Good morning. idea. <laughs> to follow up on Paul, um, there's an isolated vegetative wetland in, in the south of the site. It's isolated in the sense that it's not connected to another wetland system. It's, there's homes in this region, there's a, a dirt road that access to the golf course and then there's the you know as you saw the golf course maintenance facility over here um, when I performed another site inspection to support the application I did two plots basically to document what's in the upper buffer zone and the lower buffer zone and I provided that in the, in the, the narrative within the upper buffer zone it's it's almost entirely non-native invasive shrubs. Um, I've, I've listed them, and we can get into those if, you, if you'd like. Within the lower buffer zone, the zero to the 50, especially within this, this region, there is a mix of uh, native and non-native shrubs in there. There's, there's, a, there's a decent amount of northern arrowwood shrubs there, and, it, and as you probably walk through there, you can see that there's a little, a little bit more openness in this region. Um, than there is with this, with the thick vegetation through here. So the proposal that's included with the notice of intent is there's a there's step by step uh, is, is to follow as far as construction. But once the erosion control are installed here, another line of silt fence would be installed along the edge of the wetland to protect it. We're not doing um, like earth removal activities here, but it's just to basically set the limit really for, for work, but also um, if there is any minor amounts of disturbance, it would be protected. There are, there are trash and debris in here that would be removed and disposed of. And then within the buffer zone, the, the non-native invasive shrubs would be identified, flagged, and they'd be uh, loppered at the base dabbed with herbicide, uh, dabbing with a foam paint uh, brush so that they're not sprayed so we don't cover any other vegetation. It's a common practice for invasive species removal. Um, and dispose of at a licensed facility. Licensed facility meaning that we're not, it, it's got to handle invasive plants and it's not just going to be chipped up and put into a mulch pile and gone on to somebody else's house. Um, in addition to that, there would be approximately 40 native shrubs interplanted among the area where needed, and the native shrubs would provide um, additional wildlife habitat value than, it, than exists. And you have uh, berry producing species with, within the, that selection to en enhance uh, avian uh, and small mammal uh, food <coughs> uh, value. Excuse I me, sure. I have your plan behind that. Oh, okay. I'm this is somewhat of a representation of what the you know, you would, you'd expect to see upon completion. These are the species like bayberry, chokeberry, arrowwood, shadbush, and wood hazel, which, which are all buffer zone um, uh, native shrubs. In addition to that, there would be Virginia creeper, vine, planted along the base of the wall. Uh, Virginia creeper, once it gets going, it gets. Uh, it's get, the, the vine has a uh, little tentacles that will go out and uh, over time cover cover a wall or, or side of a home. Um, that would also provide some vegetation screen to the wall. So that's also proposed. And in it, once that's set, there need to be a monitoring and maintenance program. And that's included in the narrative as well. And it's going to take a little time to get established and underway. So I think when in some projects, when you when the project's first done, everything's cut and planted, and you go out and look at it, you say, geez, you know, this is, this is not kind of how we had it in 
sufficient, but you gotta give it a little time to let the species fill in, let the herbaceous layer come back, and in addition to that, there would be the, the maintenance and monitoring so that someone would need to go out there uh, annually and, and monitor for resprouting, and if there is any resprouting of the invasives that were treated, they have to be, again, treated and uh, removed. You, you'll get small seedlings that can be hand pulled. It's not a, it's, it's just a one-man um, inspection. It's not a, a big task, but that would need to be done to, to, to maintain what, what was created. Certainly, take any questions you may have. Okay. Um, my first question is going to be: How high is that retaining wall at the base? Is it, you the uh, wall varies in height. Yeah, um, but I I want to know across the, the base. base. Okay, I just want to show you. Yeah. Um, right here, the wall at this corner would be 4.7 feet above the existing ground, which is about this high. And over here, at the low end, the height of the wall would be. 15.3 feet high at this point here. And then from here, it'll, it'll start to hit 15 feet high. The reason is is that the ground is sloping off very quickly from here down towards the wetland area. I mean, you could see that when we walk out there. Um, and then from here, when you get up into this, you know, this area here, the ground's only two or three inches high. At this point, the wall would be 8.8 .8 feet high, and down here would be 15. So, you know, as you come uphill, you're you're, you're starting to come into the existing slope. The purpose is to keep that wall relatively flat. The uh, slope from here down is 2% to match the grade of the proposed lawn area. And you know, the reason for the height of the wall is to have a lawn area in here going back at 2% sloping away from the house. Okay, so now we come to the real big issue. And granted, it's not much of a wetlands out there, but that is the 50 foot is are no disturbed. The 100 foot, I don't, I'm speaking for myself, I don't have a problem with the 100 foot being filled. The mitigation, I think, covers the 100 foot being filled because we don't have to let you do even the 100. But that, the 50 foot, I just, I have a real hard time going in there. You're going to have all these your infiltration, all piping into the 50, you know, I just, I, I would like to see it at the 50 foot go straight across there and there. Don't go into the 50 foot and bring your quick plantings back here and do everything back a little bit. I just have real high time because that's what we're supposed to be protecting. Buffer is a no disturb buffer, and um, I don't know. I, I just and and I know it's not the prettiest site out there right now, but it's still a for buffer. So <coughs> I have a hard time with that. Okay, Richard. Um, I happen to agree with Penny. Um, that was the first thing that, that, and actually the only thing that really bothered me was that it goes into the 50. I can understand from the way the plans are laid out why you would want to do it, um, but in my relatively short tenure, that see the 50-foot buffer seems to be something that we've got to be consistent about, and uh, I'd really like to see that area undisturbed or improved, but not eliminated for a lawn. Build. Yeah, um, even when I was out there, it, I just, I can't take my visual view and put it on this piece of paper and come up with, with the height of these walls the way you're talking about it. We're talking about a, we're, we're talking about, um, almost 20 feet in elevation from the 50 foot up to the uh, uh, level of the house and and you're talking about four foot walls and five foot walls it somehow it just doesn't compute um, but that my math goes back unfortunately many many years um, that's something that bothers me. I think those, those walls have got to be really, really high. And then 
you're talking about having to uh, uh, to go into the subsurface quite substantially, I would think, to uh, to enforce it, to uh, to to uh, make sure that they stay up, um, and there's no way to get behind them to uh, uh, to put in deadbolts or anything like that to to uh, uh, to secure them. It seems to me, plus. The I, I, the, the comments made earlier about the uh, about the 50 foot, um, but even between the 50 foot and the 100 feet, you're talking about a tremendous amount of fill, um, and uh, I'm trying to keep that out of my mind <laughs> because. I'm not sure how germane it is, except that that is, that is habitat. Uh, admittedly, it's not, you know, the perfect habitat. But uh, uh, I'm trying to separate the two things, and, and I, I just find it, I just find the whole thing really, really, really difficult. Um, and I'm not sure where to go. That haven't had a question in that whole <laughs> spiel because I'm not entirely sure where to go, except that I I just have a very hard time um, visualizing it and 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 trying to see how your your walls can support the amount of of loose loose dirt that's going to be behind them, um, and. Um, and then going into the 50 to me is 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 is, is really really rough. So that, I mean those are comments I guess rather than questions. And I'm, if anybody'd like to respond, can I respond? To them? Sure. Is um, you know as far as the wall being able to support the soil, that's that that is um, uh, not a problem to do that. The wall would be engineered by a structural engineer. Um, it's going to be a U-shaped wall. It'd probably be a foot thick with a, with a proper reinforcing steel in it. The footings would have to be four feet in the ground for frost protection to meet the building code, but the wall is very easily designed to hold back the weight of the soil and even the load of the um, water that would come into it and be recharged into the wall. I mean, on the interior of the wall. The stormwater system that we have, because the soils out there have a, a fairly high groundwater, where, wherever we put that ground, that system, we would have to be at least two feet above the high groundwater. And the system has to be relatively level, so you can recharge it on an uh, equal uh, basis, similar to what you do with a leaching trench and a septic system, as it can't be on a steep angle. So wherever we put that recharge system, we would end up with some kind of a wall, or if we get an earthen slope, we'd have to bring that earthen slope way downhill to prevent any breakout of that water coming out of that stormwater recharge system. So whether you have the wall there or not, you're, you're still going to see a mound down in there in order to accommodate the recharge. And the reason the recharge system is at the bottom of the hill, or, or the or downhill side, is because we have to collect all the water from the top of the hill up by the house and let it run downhill. It has to be captured, and that increase in volume would be recharged at the lower elevation. Um, as far as the height of the wall, um, we aren't proposing any fill up against that wall at the low end where it is 15 feet high. Uh, typically, you do that to hide the wall, but what, what we propose is, as shown on the plan, that that entire wall would, would, would be covered with ivy, um, you know, to uh, hide the wall. There's also shrubs in the front of it and along the side on Brad's plan. He's showing shrubs going up all the way up on the country club side of it and on this side of it as well. So when you see the wall, if you do see it, um, you wouldn't see the height that we're talking about because it, it's going to be covered. The other thing is, when we're out on the site, this is the area, this is the area where that, sh that um, shack was, or the uh, maintenance shed for the country mm -hmm. club, and this area in here is pretty heavily wooded with high trees, so someone looking through here isn't going to see that wall like you normally see, that, you know, unless these were all torn out, which, which isn't. Paul, while you're standing there, where's the access road that I, mean, I walked in from? The access road is, is, is down here. There's a house on the corner of um, uh, Michael Avenue, which yeah. is the access road and Moreland Road. This 
there, there's a lot in here that goes from their house straight to the country club property. So they, that, that road's right about in here. So there's a strip that's, the road's not right on that property line. It sits. It's no, right. no, yeah, no. Right. The road's about where my pen is. Okay. Kevin? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I think the mitigation plan is really comprehensive. There's a lot of good things in removing the invasives, maybe, you know, positive for that area. It's just that the town has the 50-foot no-touch undisturbed zone. So I think if a project really absolutely needed to get into that 50 feet to complete the project, then the commission has some leeway to say, well, gee, maybe we can allow a few feet or otherwise it won't work. But to propose a project in the 50, I mean, I think it's our role to try to keep it outside of an undisturbed 50. I mean, I don't think anybody's against establishing a lawn, uh, reconstructing a new home, doing some planting. But, you know, there's, there's quite a bit of work with the uh, stormwater and the lawn and the wall in the 50. And that, that would be my main concern. You know, we're trying to enforce the regulations and the bylaws as they're written. And I think we have to start by, as Penny and Richard are saying, you know, 50 feet is 50 feet. Anybody in the audience? Well, the only comment I and I understand what the concerns of the commission are, and but <clears throat> and, you know, and maybe there is some some other things we can do here, but traditionally, from from what I understand, the Serenos, uh, Bob Serino lives across the street, and, and Dr. Tom Serino and his sisters have owned this house for seven or eight years. This whole slope was always their family vegetable garden and things along those lines. And I think Brad said he saw some indications out there. So, and, and, and you know, you have a situation, and I, I don't want to reiterate what Brad said, but uh, to get rid of the invasive species to make the habitat better. And I can understand, this is an isolated wetland, which, and I, and I understand the local bylaw, I'm not trying to take it, it, there is no setback from an isolated wetland under the state regulations. And I believe in Paul's narrative, there's 100 linear feet of that wall that's within the 50 foot, within the 50 foot buffer. And under your, uh, under your, under your bylaws, there's a waiver, there's a waiver provision here. And I, I think the standard, there's a couple of standards here. One of them that will not adversely affect any areas subject to protection under these regulations or, or uh, represents a significant ecological improvement when compared to the existing conditions. And that's the whole reason why you have this, because, you know, uh, you know land, and again, I don't mean to be pedantic, but, you know, land unique. <laughs> well, I am anyhow. <laughs> I can't help myself, though. Uh, but it, it's... It's something here, and, and, and that's why, and you know, that's why with the invasive, with the invasive species, with the with the habitat enhancement which we have here, you know, to monitor this, to keep the invasives out of here, you know, I, you know, I think gives, a, you know, gives a significant benefit. I don't think I don't think it substantially, you know, adversely. I don't think it adversely affects the. Well, first of all, under the state, there are, it is, it, we're not protecting it under the under the state act anyhow, because the state permits it as of, you know, as of right. There isn't any buffer, so it's a matter of a local bylaw thing. I think we meet we meet the provisions of the waiver. We do understand that you know th this is a significant, you know, topography changes in there for the reasons stated, and that's why one one of the things at the, at the outset, you know, I think this project is good. As it is, and the other thing is, as Pat was saying at the outset, you know, as, as I, I don't want any impression that we're offering off-site mitigation to try to get something we're not otherwise entitled to. I, I feel this, you know, on the merits of itself, albeit I understand that the concerns of the commission here, but you know, particularly when there's chances to where there are very, you know, ecologically sensitive issues to be able to deal with those in the, you know, in the immediate neighborhood of this. It's an opportunity that the town has and, and the commission has. And, you know, if, if the commission feels that whatever, for whatever, for whatever reason that I'm not privy to, that uh, it's not something that is, you know, preferable. But I see this, I see this, uh, you know, as a permittable project. I, I really do. Can I ask a couple quick sure, questions, not to cut you off? 
Paul, what's the distance in that corner that that extends into the 50 foot? And do you know how many square feet are in the 50 feet? 2,134, I believe. Let me just check that. The 2,134 square feet is this on the outside of the wall to this orange line, this triangular shaped area here. Well, what's the amount of square footage of the habitat enhancement area? So, uh, just for, so 2,000, two, 2,134 square feet. Okay. And what's that distance, the, the length, roughly from the corner of the retaining wall back to the right 50? Here, the shortest distance? The other way. How much are you extending into the, into the 50? Is that oh, like 35 the feet, 30, 30? Um, 32 feet. And then how much is the... Um, the green area? Yeah. It's 5,475 square feet from the, from the wall down. It doesn't include any of the planning strip coming up. It's just from the wall down, down to that orange line, which is the edge of the IVW. Okay. Here's an average setback. Uh, we did an average from the wetland line up to the wall and here back was about an average of 38 feet is what you'd have um, if the wall were built this location as proposed. Okay. Frank, I'd like to, uh, to talk to what Bill was talking about. Yeah. Uh, and that has to do with is it is what is proposed better than what is there now is right. essentially Absolutely. the, um, and that I think is where I'm coming from. Um, in that, it's my understanding that this is all going to be playground and that kind of thing, grass, right. da da da. Um, that to me is 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 not. Uh, substituting one kind of habitat with another kind of habitat. I think if, if, in my own opinion, um, I think the idea of uh, doing something better than what is there, this piece of property has 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 all the elements that one could do that, um, but. Just, just doing it, if you will, for a playground doesn't doesn't fit it as far as I'm concerned, uh, and and that is is sort of belittling the idea, I think. But um, that's where I come from. I I think you could go into the 50, and you could you could put together a uh, a, a native garden that. Uh, would blow the existing thing out of the water, uh, and and really make something you know that was was wonderfully attractive and much better than it is now. I guess I just don't see that in this plan. Okay. Can I just maybe add a little bit of thought here, just for consideration? So the house project is on a separate lot, right? Yes. And what that would require is a stormwater piece because of the slope yes and that's all that's required it's out of our jurisdiction right. or yes. so this the piece that we're talking about just because I don't want anybody to get confused so we're not thinking about the house we're thinking about this expansion for a playground area or grass area but I mean I I did walk around out there as well and I mean, I see breakout at the bottom of a hill. I, I just don't see a real significant wetlands piece. I do see an awful lot of invasive plants. I guess if I were the applicant, I'd be saying, well, what's, what would encourage me to want to spend all this money to, to remove the invasives, to, to do the planting on the bottom? Um, it's, they have to have some gain as well. I understand what you're saying. I, I mean, I'm. I'm thinking that this is a pretty good planting of, of decent material. I think Pat noted that it was a good job in um, in the planting. 
I just wonder if there's any room for any compromise here. Um, you know, I know that the 50 is the 50, but is there any sort of, I'd love to see a lot of that invasive cleaned up and I'd like to see a, a good planting plan um, here. And I'm just afraid that you won't get that um, and you're gonna continue to have that mess that's at the bottom um, is how I look at it. Can I make a suggestion? Or I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, I was just gonna say, I mean, this is it's clearly not a black and white. I mean, the 50, it is invasive. If this was a BBW, you're trying to get into the buffer and it was pristine and healthy, it would be a much firmer um, response from me to say, yeah, but I, I, I think I agree with that. If, I, right. if we were looking at something or, right. you know, no different than when we're looking at some seawall piece in, in Hamarok where we have right. a, it's a barrier beach, but it's already a very altered right. resource. And this, right. to me, is altered. Right. It, should, it should be clear that we have a 50 for a reason and we, and we have the people like making every attempt. But you know, your argument about what's there now and what it could be, I mean, it's, I think it's open to questions and decisions by the commission. I don't think it's in any statute black and white that you have to do one or the other because it would be enhanced in some ways. Right. Can, I, can I ask a question? Sure. I was just talking to, to Dr. Geary. Is, because very much like to get this permit for all the reasons that I, I'll try not to be overly stated. Can we seek some type of something to address some of the commission's concerns? What, what if we move the wall 10 feet back uphill, 10 feet further away from the buffer zone and enhance an additional 10-foot strip of, to get rid of, well, you were getting rid of the invasives anyhow, but to also put in, uh, you know, habitat enhancement type uh, vegetation. Because I, I think that is, will add a substantial amount to, uh, to that. And uh, I just was talking with Mike to find out, obviously, that it isn't the first preference, but we hear the concerns of the commission that they have, and I think that probably goes a good way towards addressing some of the concerns the commission has. So instead of 35, you'd be 25, essentially, Paul, 30. Yeah. In other words, move it 10 Or actually, you said it was 32, 32 so it would yeah. be 22. You mean uh, the amount of work in the 50-foot buffer? Well, what Bill's saying is if that wall moves back 10, 10 feet. you scaled that at roughly 32, so now it would be 22. Oh, right, yes, thank you. So Sorry. it would be 22 feet into the 50 on that corner. It's, right. this, it's this whole side hill topography that throws everything off. Right. You can see the other, you know, the, uh, you know, the east side of the walls, not, you know, is in it. Right. And this will make That's less correct. of it in. Can you see that, Penny? Ten feet would basically bring it back to the thick, thick black line yeah, there. It's, yeah, it's All right, where yeah, your infiltration is. So that's where you would have the retaining wall and then the other stuff. Right, and the infiltration behind. stuff. We well, move. that, it, it does make quite a difference of getting out of that 50, mm -hmm. in my estimation. I'd like it all out, but I mean. And you'd be willing to do the same type of planting that you propose now, just yes. another 10 feet of it? Yes. Yeah. I would. I, that would be very helpful. It really just. You know, that would make a big difference. And we'll, then we agree to it. We agree to it. You know, I, I'm going to kind of want to see the plan, but I, yes, that's a great move in the right direction. Well, well if you look, yeah, here, I can see. It's a can, 10 foot, okay, yeah. between those two where he has. So it's almost right to the uh, where the retaining wall would be. Uh, Paul? Um, you don't have, at least in the plan that I have, the stairs which go down from the from the first wall down to the second. I can add those. Yeah, you know, the stairs are being here, just above the hundred foot buffer zone. I mean, you know, you have them somewhere in here to go from the patio down. The um, there's a wall here, which is three feet high. If you're on the lawn looking up, you'd see a three foot high wall. Right. It steps up to the patio. The steps would be here and here somewhere. We can add those. Um, and are you going to have 
stairs that go down from the lower wall down into the uh, uh, into the into the 50 in that area or are you going to get into that another way no, to do the planning in that right here. so the only set of stairs would be right here okay because from here we'd slope back at uh, two percent for the lawn okay and also bring it over and also to make sure the water can flow by gravity into the recharge system so you're not you're not putting any any stairs along the lower there no yeah. no okay if if you did move the wall back to 10 feet would that cause I'm just asking an informational question would that cause any movement of the recharge system of the location of it any of the of the of the, of the recharge if you move the wall up the 10 feet yeah I I'd still I would still move this up 10 feet because along the wall here we have a, a trench drain with a 12 inch pipe that's and from there asking. there's a laterals that go into this recharge system mm -hmm. I just pull everything up that's now. what I that's why I was asking yeah, we, we can do that but is it going to be as effective if you pull it up because like you said before it has to be at the bottom of the hill to be effective is it still gonna mm -hmm. do its job yes it would so it's not going to change it at all how effective the drain is no. The way that, I mean, you can see almost the soils. Yeah. There. It's, it's just got to be at the bottom. Yeah. No, I was just wondering. Right. So, I'll take a motion. Whatever. Well, do you want to close it or do you want to see another plan? And Pat has a question. Uh, I just had a question about the review of the stormwater and the drainage. I independent review. I uh, talked to Paul today and said I'd you know, run it by the town engineers, but for non-town projects, um, they're not going to be looking at it. So, we, is we, you know, I mean, you think we're looking at how these underground uh, filtration things going to work, and the drain is going to work very right closely. Did that and Paul get another plan? Can, can I say something about that? Um, under the bylaw, you can have an administrative review. The agent can do it. You can have some of the engineering department do it. What's unique about this, because we have the wall and we're going to import the, you know, the clean gravel and the stone for that system. It's straightforward. We, you know, we had more than enough room. We didn't have to worry about the parent uh, soils um, to absorb the water. We're in effect creating our own recharge system <coughs> that would be contained by the wall. Um, again, the purpose of your bylaw is that the increase in the volume of water coming off that site would be captured and controlled on the site. Um, in our stormwater calculations, um, we're going to, um, in the pre-development conditions, there's 2.63 cubic feet per second of water coming from the Parker Ave down. We're going to reduce that to 0 0.59. That's a substantial reduction. And again, that's, that's to keep all that water on our property and we can do it inside that wall area there. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is that you can send this out for review, but this is unique because it's, it's pretty straightforward and simple. Um, I mean, none of us are engineers. I'd be glad to bring it. I mean, if it's that quick a review, I'd be glad to run it by somebody in the uh, DPW engineering department. Uh, but I mean, we're relying on someone else's calculations. And I mean, if the amount of water causes this uh, wall to collapse because it wasn't uh, now, drainage issues were uh, I mean, the other thing we're going to, this, this wall will be designed by a structural engineer. Uh, we didn't design it because it's going to be expensive to design. Um, it is straightforward. It's, it, you know, it's a matter of determining the amount of steel you need to hold, to, to withstand the forces that will be up against it. Um, I think, does thing that I'm have to be approved by the building department as well, if it's a wall certain, uh, at a certain height? I believe it does. Mm -hmm. The footing and that wall. It's a structure. I, I did talk to Neil about it, right. and it is a structure, and he does have to prove it. Right. And I, I talked to him about the placement of it, and he didn't have a problem with the setbacks. Um, yeah, I'm Neil, assuming what he he's going to want is the structural engineer, as yes. you point out. Well, we have a note on the plan that it would be, uh, you know, it had to be designed by structural engineer. The other thing I'll point out, I, I did receive by email the file number today. It is today? Okay. I mean, I think part of what Paul's saying, if you cut it to something simple, is that by flattening out that as opposed to having it run, yeah. 
that's you're going to have that water absorption. Uh, I'd just I, like I mean, to see another plan. You know. In the revised plan. The revised, revised plan. plan. Yeah. Yeah. Can, You'd have can, to do it anyway. Yeah. I'm can sure. I make a suggestion? The, the only reason I ask the board's indulgence, if if you possibly can, the only thing I say is I'm going to be. They're not going to be here the next week. I'm always concerned about you have five members here tonight on quorum issues when you actually vote. I was wondering if it was possible. Uh, if no it's need possible. Four. Huh? No need for it. No, no, no. But, what I, no, but I meant is by the, the next meeting, yeah. if there's missing people and people who haven't heard the presentation. And what I was wondering if it's possible that, in other words, if this at the meeting closed and it's voted subject to the board's approval of the revised plan. In that case, it's fully within your, you know, if you if you feel the plan isn't revised to satisfaction, that's fine. You're not signing you're not signing any orders or conditions tonight. Those will be subject to the final orders. But I just want to, if it's all possible, I just like to know that I'm not going to be here. That conceptually, we the move this thing ten, do the plan thing, submit it. You know, Pat reviews it, make any modifications that. The next meeting, at least you and I are not going to be here. So now you've got three right. we'll people here. sitting on this tonight, and Todd will be back. No, I just, I just don't want to rush it and be sorry later. I mean, I'm, I'm thrilled with everything being moved back to NC. But, but if you, re but if you reserve it subject to that, then, it's, then you're, that. then you're withholding, so you get exactly I what you want. I think it would also have to be subject to Pat feeling confident. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely, On the stormwater. Yeah, yeah, and I'll definitely check with them, and if. If they just take even a quick review and say, you know, it's a pretty straightforward system is capturing the roof drainage and the wall and but I'm not an engineer, so I just want someone else to say it's okay. If you if we were to close this with them agreeing to move the wall back ten feet right. and to an engineer's and if it's not the town, if the town looks at it and says, you know what, we're not gonna calculate this yeah. but that a, a, a reviewing engineer Okay, is it? I, I guess I don't have a problem closing. I don't know if anybody else has the same. I don't really, except uh, I, d I guess I care more about the planting. Um, but that <laughs> hell, that could be uh, proviso as well. It's oh, absolutely. The walk is moved back, and the, and the other 10 foot area has consistent uh, mitigation plantings to expand that for a 10 foot strip. You're, you're going to submit the plan. Oh, absolutely. So we're going to have a revised plan anyway. Exactly. And an engineer, either the town or some other that Pat's going to find acceptable. Right. On the other hand, what what is the uh, uh, the rush? Because, I mean, the house is more important than the well, house. Well, what the rush is, Tony, to be frank with you, is we're doing this, we're doing this, with, with this lot, as you can see in the application, is under a purchase and sale agreement, right. and we have to close in the month of May on this. There you go. That's what the, that's what it is. Well, I guess from a construction standpoint, if I looked at it, I'd be thinking I'd want to get going on that lower well, area. That before you work on the house. First? Well, the house is going to be in the way. Hmm. I mean, just I know. I work. <laughs> try to put it together. Well, then I'm going to make a motion to close. Subject to we do get a revised plan in that Pat gets a, um, okay from an engineer on the stormwater system. I would simply say an acceptable revised plan. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're right, acceptable. I would like to uh, input just one thing. Yes. Um, as long as we're getting partial of what we want, I'd like to be real greedy and, uh, and potentially get, get, get that $7,500 to, to work on the spit. <laughs> um, yes. Kevin, are you okay with that? Had a question. So, if we close tonight, who's around to vote? Um, or are just gonna for the orders? Well, through? I think we're voted, so you oh, close. Okay. Well, so yeah, what, what I'm saying is, I, I think procedurally, well, if I could just make a suggestion, is you close the hearing and you, and you vote to issue this subject to these issues and subject to the board 
you know, such are the conditions under the order of conditions that you may set. And then, and then the primary vote has been taken. If you have other members who weren't here, then it's more ministerial what they're doing, which is okay, you so you're in an okay situation. Ministerial goes along with prickers in my mind. It does. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's just small prickers, not big ones. Well, the home run derby just got a lot smaller, but yes. Yeah. Yeah. And there's nobody in the audience that has a problem. Anybody else? Just a clarification on the engineer review. Is Pat going to ask the engineering department to take a look at it? But if it? they won't, if they don't feel right. comfortable, then, then, we'll then we're going to have to give it to an outside. All right. So somebody want to second that long winded motion? Second. Motion? second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. right. Thanks, Donnie. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Great. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Home run derby just got a lot smaller. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Son's gonna do the work on this. I'm not. <laughs> it's a little oh, Pat, football oh at the bottom. It would cost a rope. A this little what? It's a wooden fence like that um, protects that beach house at the end of it, right at the lighthouse. Mm -hmm. And a couple of the boards got knocked off mm -hmm. uh, during the storm, so they want to repair that. <coughs> So there's a letter from the owner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No problem. Thank you. And it's just putting back a few boards. Um, they're beams more than boards. Mm-hmm. This was right down on the on the bottom. It's the yeah. last house at the bottom. Um, did Kevin see that? Yeah, I did. Yep. Hey, Tom. Are they different? No, they're the same. It's going, on, Tony. Is this in the form of an RDA, or is this just in the form of a request <laughs> without the DA? What's that? It, 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 is this in the form of a, a, of a RDA? Ask, ask Pat what he thinks, because I just I handed it over to Pat because it, you know essentially I shouldn't even be to be Pat or somebody else give it. Yeah, yeah you get this on the run. Somebody hand it to you up in the field. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to go out there and uh, take a look at it, but it looked like some of the boards might have broken off during the storm. And if she's just asking to replace the boards, it's probably simple. Yeah, it seems uh, pretty important. She's trying to do some kind of blockade, so stuff is going to add a lot to talk to her about it. But, uh, well, who they're going to have for a contractor, is he capable? Yeah, we don't know. I don't even know what's, oh. yeah, if it's mentioned in there. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him ranking the other day. It's not going to be Frank, is it? No. No, he can rank. No, but he could have the same last name, so I just want to. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't want to. So I, uh, right. I suggested that she bring it in and give it to Pat. Oh, that was the least. I had no idea. I didn't even know. Okay. It looks um, straightforward. Have you, have you been out to see this? No, I we just got this. No, I think he should. Today. I think Pat's yeah. recommendation yeah. is good that he take yeah. a ride out. Yeah. I, I think we should. I think and we should. Friday, I'm, I have several out in um, Hummel Rock. If anybody wants uh, to go, okay. just tell me what time. Time is flexible. If anybody wants to, just tell me what time. Okay. It is kind of bothersome that they wind up getting all. I mean, I know they're spending all the money to permit that dredging. They are doing all the work. Well, I they are doing all. I it's just too bad they can't dump it on Situate Beach and let it migrate down because it's well, going to get there. Because it does migrate down. I know. That's exactly where it goes. That it starts there, and then we'll And how do we even know whose anyway. sand is whose? We got to. Yeah. It does. But Absolutely. Well, the next phase, we'll get some sand. Yeah, they got all our sand 10 years ago. I, mean. I know. <laughs> Why can't we have some They have it or it's in the water. Uh, but I that's scary anyway, about that bridge. But I'll tell you, that, that, the harbor master from Marshfield is, is a... The, the harbor master from Marshfield is a great guy. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we're, both, we're fortunate in both towns to have... 
Oh yeah, we have Mark, been and, yeah, very involved. You know, too. And he's also done a whole bunch of stuff with the um, promoting clams. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, seeding and well, they yeah. did that last year out That's there. That's right. I was comfortable with that. Real interest. He lives in Sydney. So. Yeah. Well, he's done. A, I think a really good job with all that. So and we've used him out on the spit too. What other aging issues do we have, I Mr. Gilman? Yeah, they need certificate compliance this time. Did we I don't, I don't think we did. Um, Where's my? Uh, yeah. The order conditions for yeah, wait a second. Perkins. If you were going to discuss something though. It was the Fred, the Fred Mighty's piece with the Caswells, but Yeah, but you said something else. This one at here? the beginning. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, at the beginning you said it could go in with the report. <laughs> I can't remember what it was. It couldn't have been there. Uh, well, we well, went way over our time last meeting, so maybe we can shorten it up. Yeah, let's, let's try to We're beat the record. Oh, yeah. Go longer was, this time. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yes, <laughs> well, Yeah, there was one thing we we met today with um, Coastal Zone Management and DEP because of all the storm related cleanup. And Coastal Zone wanted us to lose the stone, sand, and cobble where it landed. And DEP said people could be allowed to put it back on the beach. So we met with those people today and how, and we got a few answers about the questions we had. All that sand in the parking lot and Peggy Beach. Now the plan is to have the town move it back onto the public portion of Peggy Beach rather than leaving it in the parking lot. We're going to raise the level of the parking lot to two feet so that people who park there, it's going to be gravel. Yeah. And that was okay with DEP and Coastal Zone. They're going to gravel it, and it's going to be um, better for parking. We're going to raise it two feet? The, a section of the uh, Peggy Beach parking lot really dips down. Yeah, talked about yeah, yeah, they, that, they, that they came in to us. Yeah, yeah, they they uh, yeah, yeah, part of it is two feet. The rest of it, is, some portions, it's not at all. It's, it's level. Um, and for Hummer Rock, their suggestion was... Um, Pat, on that one, on, um, at Peggy, I'm sorry. Before yeah. I, yeah, I have a question. So, I, I, you and I were out there and we looked yeah. at that area and we looked at primarily that water's going to run sort of into the marsh mm -hmm. um, and uh, that was a term it was one of the engineers up on Third Cliff where they put like crushed stone or something what was the term they used? Oh a spreader. Level, sp level spreader. I don't know if that's a real term or not but, but that's what they, yeah. something like that where at least that runoff doesn't just discharge right you know, yeah. go into some crushed stone or, or but heavier stone, you know. Oh, at the edge of the parking lot. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah. otherwise right. we're just going to wind right. up with silt and and um, if it's a lot of water running, you know, we could wind up with more sediment in unless the marsh. It, unless we just burn it off right there, just continue to burn. But you know. it means it's just going to hold the water in that lot, right? I mean, I mean, there's already a berm that runs around a good part of the and parking lot. And it needs an opening at... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but so if that's going right. to drain there, I'm just thinking right. that we should encourage them or d tell them to maybe use some crushed stone. Yeah, or maybe or even some six inch, yeah. something bigger. Yeah. Well, yeah. like like they did on the uh, widow's walk parking lot. Yeah, yeah, so, something so that if that runs off there, it's not just going to yeah. wind up washing more um, earth and sediment into that marsh. Kevin said they were going to do that down on the. Uh, uh, down a minor, yeah. Bailey's, yeah. Oh, Bailey's Cosworth. The other pile of sand that we talked about that was when they cleared the trench for the marsh and right. the other road. Um, they've asked that I speak to the residents on Townway Extension to see if they would be interested in putting it in front of their who house. Asked, who asked that? Everybody asked that. <laughs> so they're sending you out. Well, You're the new guy. Well, I was asking what exactly. you do with that. And, uh, Take and Penny with you. This contract is, yeah, this contract is ready to do it. It's just that if they, those people that are down there want to pay for it, you know, the sand is their fault. Right. If they say no, the other group is going to ask for it. But it's better to go back. Uh, it would be better to go right sand. across. Yeah. Sure. And then Stan Humphreys is going to go ahead with the planting plan for the people up at in the other uh, in a uh, yes thank you so and then down at Hummer Rock and uh, they're saying for the north end they were open to some pilot kind of things trying different things for different locations who is 
PDP really? and coastal zone, but no no seawalls and no large boulders, but other things could be tried. But they're also talking about raising the road there. What do they think's gonna hold up if this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they're gonna they're gonna actually yeah. raise the road at the at the far end of Hummer. They're talking about raising that so that during emergencies you can get to Fort Cliff rather than just every time scrape it and put it somewhere. Realize it's going to keep going, going, so that the road is going to be raised. They're going to have to file for that, though, I would assume. Yeah, they have to file, but I think Coastal Zone is saying that's better than what you're doing because now you've created like a ditch and a chain, a place where the water is really going to come over one area. But they don't want to consider conducting any of that revampment in that like 280 area. No. Really? Yeah. Rose it opens a big sandbag. Do you want to go water. down there with Pat and see if you can persuade is, them? Is this DEP making this ruling? No, they, it wasn't. It wasn't as much of a ruling as a discussion. It was like you guys have a lot of problems. Here's some options. We're trying to help Rosemary, so go yeah. easy on. No, Pat. I, I know that, but Coastal Zone Management has no authority to make a decision. Obviously, right. And you know that's what I keep hearing is it's beach nourishment, beach nourishment. Yeah. They don't do anything else. Yeah, we brought up um, the idea of there's two houses with a wall, three houses with a wall, and a gap in the middle, and that's where the water chance through. And they were saying no to the wall, and DEP said no to the wall. And then we said, well, is there something we could do? And they said, you really beach nourishment stone kind of gabion things, and but they, they're against a wall in that area. And it's scouring, and there's a lot of different things that we discussed. They still want Hummer treated as a pristine barrier beach, and it's just the most unrealistic. Yeah. Well, it is pristine, but. I think all the bricks and sand they did get, they put it there, but it won't last long, and that's the issue. It's frustrating. Yeah. The glaze is going to take up the road, the paved road there, too, because they've had to repave it every year. I think they're going to make that hard packed gravel. Really? Rather well, than asphalt? Put the asphalt yeah. back? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, it keeps looking. I was thinking they were going to pour like 12 inches of concrete over it or something. Yeah. Wow. I'm concerned about septic, too. About yeah. Septic. Well, those areas down there, they. And Peggy, there, yeah, so. Yeah. Did you ever find out about that when you and I went down and we found that new tight tank? Yeah, that we think had been a, a permit. That was um, the one on Peggy. Yeah. The right, yeah. They had gone through the permitting according to them, so we, we had to check that. And then Penny thought she remembered. But I remember a year or so ago on Conway Extension that we did, somebody did come in for it. A tight so, tank? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I, where, where was it? Was it the first house? No. It was 20, what did we 20, say? Five? 25. Yeah, it was probably it's hard to know what you're odd and even there anymore. But yeah. <laughs> well, I know the house on the end came in for some No, but I mean, there's no <laughs> even <laughs> side well, of the let's road. Let's look it up. Hold okay. on. Let's point uh, five. We'll write that down. Just we'll, we'll I'm pretty sure it was 20. It was spelled out rather than the number 25. Yes. It was yeah. It was spelled out. Yeah, that's the only person that's living there right now. The rest of them are some of people. Is somebody actually living in that oh, house? the next house. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's tough. All right. Um, I make a motion to accept the orders of condition for 305 Central Ave. 309. 309. Oh, boy. Rosemary's condition made it into this this uh, condition, set of conditions, too. What's that? About um, holding back the gravel with those it, types of bricks. Small block type Small cobblestones block, yes. or yeah. bricks set vertically and embedded along right. against the driveway. Yeah. Thank you. Planted Thank you. could be yeah. added, yeah. but boulders shall not be placed right. there. Right. right. Okay. That's that RD1. You can. Anyways, in the planting plan, that's all <laughs> part of that. So I make a motion to accept it. I'll so second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then I make a motion to accept the minutes of March 4th as written. It's fast, Steve. We got two minutes. Accepted. I mean, second. Two minutes. 
All in favor? Okay. Right. I make a motion to accept the minutes of March 18th as written. Yeah, that was a good second. All. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get all that? Okay. What else? That That's all from this girl. Anybody else? No, I didn't record no other administrative correspondence. No, that's good. I haven't looked at correspondence. I'm not going to. Uh, we don't have time. 829. Okay. Wow. Can I? No. Why'd you say that? <laughs> I can't? No. <laughs> go ahead. You blew it, but go ahead. It's only a week and a half away from this meeting. Right. Okay. Now, my concern is the boarding of the building. Um, they're not going to be really. I know. I don't know if they'll be ready in time for me to look at them. I won't be here to you, you Well, have let's see what they do. You have three people, and Todd wasn't here for the whole year. We'll see what happens. See what by the time they get the engineers and all that sort of stuff. They may not even be ready. I don't think they oh. realize it's not two weeks till the next meeting. It's, I know, it's only a week. Yeah. Right. Well, that's that why I'm two asking. Well, yeah, we I have agree. The so, days so we could go out to the next. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I, I bet they're not ready on the All right, I got a motion to adjourn. I second. Make a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.